All right, there we go. Hello, hello, John S. Rhodes, and we are going to discuss why looking poor is so important. Now, obviously, this goes against everything that you have learned. You think that you have heard again and again that looking rich is important. And if you haven't heard that, it's likely that you certainly feel that way, that you should keep up with other people, that you should keep up appearances, that to feel good, to have high self-esteem, to embrace growth, that you should not look poor. And so this is advice for you, and this is based on life lessons that I have learned. And very importantly, this comes from multi-millionaires all the way up through multi-billionaires. So yes, looking poor is important. Hi, my name is John S. Rhodes of the Rhodes Brothers, and my brother Matt and I are here to serve you with the best information that we possibly can. This is greater wealth through mastery. Now, why is it so important to look poor? The very first thing is that you want to avoid what is known as the hedonic treadmill. And really what that means is if you have a little bit of money and then you make more money or you get more money, what do you always do? What do most people at least always do if they make more money? For example, they get a raise, perhaps they get an inheritance, perhaps something happens when they change jobs and the amount of money that they have and or make goes up. What typically happens? Well, you know the answer is that the expenses go up, the debt goes up, what we buy increases. So if we make $10,000 more, what happens is that we spend 11 or 12 or $15,000 more. Now, I know you've experienced this where you think you have more money, so as a result of that, you spend more money. I'll tell you a quick example. So I remember when I was young, my father got a raise and I think it was probably something like something pretty insignificant in today's dollars. It was probably 500 to a thousand dollars. It was a big raise for him back then. Well, what he did is he went out and he bought a brand new, wonderful stereo system and it was over a thousand dollars, not by much, but it was a little bit over a thousand dollars. And when I heard that, I thought, okay, well, he's making, let's say, $1,000 more, and so he's buying something for $1,000. But here is the insidious part of this trap. Even though he made, let's say, $1,000 more, that was the raise, that was before taxes. And then obviously after taxes, maybe it was $750, maybe $800, $850, it doesn't matter. It was less than the $1,000 that he immediately spent. Not only that, but he needed to work the entire year to accumulate what he thought was $1,000. So as soon as he made more money, he spent all of that money and then some. Pretty, pretty dangerous stuff right there. And that is the hedonic treadmill where we get more, we spend more, we get more, we spend more, we get more, we spend more, we get more, we spend more. It is pure evil. And when you attempt and work to be poor or at least not raise the bar, as a result of that, you're able to accumulate extra money, extra profits, extra savings, and then that money can be invested to maintain your wealth or more importantly, grow your wealth and not only improve your life, but also let that money make more money. The rich allow money to make more money. They allow it. They allow it. And that word is so, so important because if you are always increasing your salary, increasing your pay, you think you are uh, you know, coming into extra money, you're spending, 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 and it gets past that and you never feel like you can get beyond. Well, that is how you never allow yourself to spend over what you're bringing in. And one way of doing that is that when extra money comes in, you work very, very hard so that you never spend up to that amount. And in fact, way, way below that. Now, the second thing is, is that financial freedom 
comes from simplicity. So the harder that you work, not on making money, but on thinking poor, not thinking poor thoughts. And that doesn't mean not thinking about abundance, but if you think about what you already have and having gratitude and appreciating what you already have, this will help you. So as you make more money, as you provide more value to people, here's the great news. You will generally make more money. You will help more people, provide more value. You will make more money. And when you make more money, you make more money. You see, when you do more, create more, more comes in. And by keeping things simple, you don't have to worry about spending more than you're bringing in. And again, you keep your expectations low and your appreciation and your gratitude sky high. And again, this is why looking poor as a mindset is a great way to operate. So instead of buying that purse or buying those new shoes or buying that new car or upgrading it all, what you do is hold yourself back, hold yourself back, hold yourself back. Because frankly, probably what you have is quite good, better than you can imagine, better than most people in the world. Now, when it's time, obviously you upgrade, you improve, but you can certainly, I love this as a kid, you could reduce, reuse, recycle, right? So the idea there is you could reduce your reliance on those things in the outside world that make you feel good, okay? Reuse is something along the lines of, hey, I've got this car, I've got this vehicle, let's say, I'm gonna keep using it for a little while longer, maybe a few more months, maybe six months, maybe a year. And even that activity of feeling poor despite an increase in wealth, an increase in, in income, that will allow you to, again, put that money, the extra money since you're not spending it, into productive assets where money is making money. So it's not about looking poor or even feeling poor. It's the mindset of, reduction. It's the mindset of gratitude and your real freedom, the true freedom, so that objects, things, stuff that you buy, they don't own you. You own them, you use them, you appreciate them. You don't own them. There are many stories where people buy the very rich, the super wealthy, they buy one house after another, or they buy multiple cars that they don't need. And they're doing that to you know, scratch some itch, maybe save some money, right? In other words, harness and capture their wealth in some way. But here's the deal. Their possessions possess them. What they think they own, owns them. It's devilish. It's insidious. Freedom comes from less. Less is more. The way of the minimalist is the righteous path for so many people. Now that does not mean giving away all your worldly possessions. That doesn't mean just frittering away the excess wealth. It's the opposite of that. You create value, you generate wealth and greater income, and then you convert that into productive assets that help grow your wealth over time. And you will continuously improve your wealth and you will be buying new, better things over time, but not quite as much as you want. That's the key of looking poor or the idea of looking poor. It's that subtle shift of not letting the spending and the, the greed and the envy overtake your life and ruin you. That's what happens to so many people. It really does, and I'm sure you can think of many examples on your own of people in your own life. I know several entrepreneurs who have made millions, and then guess what happens? They get over their skis, meaning they get overextended. They think that they're gonna keep having that cash come in, and then they spend, spend, spend. They even think that they are investing, and then they own multiple homes, and then things like the great financial crisis happen, and they are taken to the bottom of the ocean right? They're taken out behind the barn and beaten about the head and shoulders. They have to go back home and live with mom because they're overextended. Now, I'm not talking about the people that are living paycheck to paycheck. If, if you're really truly struggling, this isn't for you exactly, right? Because you're like, hey, I'm trying to get there. I'm doing my best, John. This isn't for you. This is for when the extra comes in. So when that becomes you, not now, but when that becomes you and you make the extra $100, 500,000, 10,000, 100,000, when that little pinch of extra comes in, 
harness it, hold it, convert it to assets. Buy a little of this, buy a little of that in terms of assets, not in terms of stuff that you would consume. Things that in turn basically ruin your mindset and make you feel rich, but you're actually poorer. So you don't want that to happen. Now, a third thing is by looking poor, you actually escape feeling like you're in survival mode. Because you see what happens is, is that when more money comes in, you then chase after what you think you're supposed to do, the expectations of other people. Survival mode is what you feel but it's generally not internally driven. Usually it's externally driven, the outside world, and you feel that others, and it could be people very close to you. It could be your spouse, could be family members, could be the kids, grandparents, could be friends. It could be people that, at, that are at work and they say, you've got more, spend more, do more, be more. And that is exactly wrong because they put you into, if you allow them, they put you into survival mode. And that's really odd if you think about it, because you think that if you have more, you're safer, but you're not. Just because you have more, it does not mean you have more safety. In fact, the more that you have, the more that you feel you have to protect. Now, insurance can help you with that. Obviously, that's another topic for another day. We've covered that on the Rhodes Brothers channel before. You can find that easily enough. That's not the point here. The point is, is that when you have more, you feel like you have more to lose. So many people, they go more, 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 and they accumulate. They accumulate. And then, of course, what they own owns them, as I've said. But more importantly, they feel they have more to lose. And I know you felt that. If you've ever bought a new car or even a new used car, heck, even a beater when you had a really bad beater and then your next beater is better, well, what happens is, is you're like, ooh, I better take care of this thing. So you drive it more gingerly, you take it more easy, you avoid the potholes. And so that is an example of you having something that's better and then being more cautious and more careful. It controlling you more. Instead of enjoying that car, you're more afraid of the dents and the dings and the scratches just because you reached out on the wealth curve. Maybe too early. Maybe too early. There's always a chance to upgrade. The idea is to delay so that you don't feel like you are in survival mode. Okay, now the fourth thing here for us why looking poor is so important is you're really looking at and feeling, right? You're, you're looking for the feeling. You're not looking for the object. You're looking for the feeling of authenticity. You want to be authentic. You want freedom, of course, but you want to be the real you. And when you accumulate goods and when you buy products and even when you get certain services, what happens is, is that you're looking for external validation, not internal validation. Well, is that authentic? Is that really what you want? One of the best things to realize is that if you're shopping for something, so more money comes in, let's say, you've got more money, uh, or you have some money set aside, you get great feelings even dreaming and imagining what you could have. In fact, it's better to keep shopping and shopping and shopping as in window shopping. It's great to window shop. What that really comes down to, if you're not familiar with that phrase, it's looking at what you could buy, not for the sake of envy, but to really make sure you know what you're getting, to really deeply know what you want, to really fully understand what matters to you, your core, your soul, your family, your friends, but most importantly to you as an authentic person, authentic being a soul who wants something and has the desire. Well, where's that being driven, right? Where is that being driven? And where is the driving coming from, right? So where are you going and where is that coming from? So look at yourself from an elevated perspective and think, is this the real me? Would the real me purchase that and why? Why do I need that object? And if you think, ah, if I had less, I'd be fine. If I wasn't sleeping on that bed and it wasn't as comfortable, would I be okay the next day? I think you'd get by. If I didn't have that car, if I didn't have those clothes, would I be okay? Probably would. This is why some people do things, in case you're wondering, even though they have an abundance of wealth, they will simply fast to fast. 
to have control. This is why some people will just wear plain t-shirts, generic, plain, unbranded t-shirts. Why? Because that's more authentic than having some brand on your shirt for some people. Now the brand can mean some things to some people. The nameplate, the brand can be very meaningful to you as an individual, but I bet if you take a moment and if you think about it, it's not the brand that you want defining you. It's not the feeling that you want from the brand. It's not the logo, it's something else. So you can dive deep as you're shopping and go, what is it that I really want? What is it that I want out of the shopping experience? And like I said, when you're window shopping, man, those feelings are good. What you dream about and what you think about and what you plan, that's as good as the actual purchase. Here's a great example. Let's say you're planning on a vacation. Many people talk about the, the vacation, they talk about where they're going, they talk about what they're gonna see, they envision all the great stuff, and then they actually go and it doesn't match their expectations. And it's like, oh, what a letdown. But if you think about the experience of the shopping and the planning and the research, that's a good time, that can be really fun. And even better, if you do the proper research, your expectations will be properly set. Because what happens is people tend to overshoot their expectations. And so what you can do is do the research, see what makes sense, what you actually want out of the vacation, and then start to dial it in. Maybe you cut corners here, maybe you trim the cost here, and then you get the right price, the right location, the right time, and then you don't spend as much but you get everything that you plan for. And so instead of this happening where your expectations don't match up, this happens and you get a very, very good connection with what's in the external world and what's in your own internal world. And that my friend is very, very authentic and more in alignment with exactly who you are. Now the fifth item, this is important about looking poor, would you rather look poor and be rich or look rich and be poor? I think I know. There are people that would rather look rich and be poor. We see them every day out in the world. I do, you do, my brother does. Everyone sees these people out and about and you think, wow, look at what they have, that car, that house. What you don't see is the pile of debt. And then there are other people that drive the old beat up pickup trucks. They've got a smile on their face. They got the dog in the back of the truck, it's good old time. And they might be millionaires, multimillionaires, and they're happy, they're satisfied, they're authentic. They have exactly what they want at the right time with the people that they care most about. And they'll probably be able to leave a legacy and help out those who are po you know, possibly, probably even less fortunate than them. That's because they know what they want. They know what matters to them. What you're doing is you're investing in growth. You're investing in the growth of yourself. You're investing in the growth of your wealth, not materialism, not objects, but in wealth creating wealth, right? When you buy assets, those assets will hold their value or increase in value as time goes on. Whereas if you buy a boat, well, that might be very satisfying for a lot of reasons. Maybe you love fishing. Maybe you'll be boating all the time. Maybe it's that time in retirement but a lot of people will buy a boat too soon. Besides, everyone knows the best boat to have access to is the friend's boat. You can also rent things. One of the things that I have done over time that has worked out really, really well is I've gotten smart about renting and also picking times to, let's say, invest in things for a limited time and then I get out. Best example of that is rather than buying a house or a lake house, or anything like that, I just look exactly at what I would like to be doing and where and when, and there's no maintenance on that. There's no mortgage, there's no extra money. In other words, I'd rather pick somewhere different every year to go on vacation rather than pick the exact same place because, well, I have to go there because it's a second or third home or it's a you know lake house or something, and then I have to go there and then you're tethered to that location. That's just me, you know, that's how things work for me. But what that means is, is rather than having, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in terms of loans, mortgage, second mortgage, third mortgage, fourth mortgage, whatever it happens to be, 
Instead, it's just like, oh, I'm going to save, 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 and then spend it when I go on some vacation for a limited time and then I'm done. So there are ways of getting exactly what you want, when you want, where you want, with who you want by investing in growth. And then what you make from what has grown, that's when you can go where you want. You can take those vacations. You can get what you want. And it's really a great way to think about how to use the cash flow from the wealth that's being generated versus you know, owning something that owns you instead. Now on the screen in just a moment, if it's not already there, you'll see the next video and you'll see how all this comes together. This is John S. Rhodes of the Rhodes Brothers. This is Greater Wealth Through Mastery, of course, and I hope you enjoy that next video. Thank you for your time and we'll see you.